So you have an idea for an app and you want to prototype something quickly. If you are like me, you'll probably end up spending months over optimizing that prototype and your idea will never see the light of day. Believe me, I'm always the guy who reinvents the wheel, adds a ton of unnecessary stuff in the tech stack and ends up building an over-engineered distributed system ready to scale up for thousands of users. However, in the end, it turns out I'm doing all this for a project which will never be finished or that doesn't really solve the user's problem. To avoid this, you and I should learn from my past mistakes and use smarter tools and simpler tech stacks. The end goal is to validate ideas and bring features in front of potential users as quickly as possible. Of course, standards and best practices should be followed, but these should be enforced by the frameworks we are using. In the next few minutes, we'll take a look at some of the simplest yet popular tech solutions that allow us to reliably build a full stack app following industry standards. First, here is the app we'll work on. To do apps are the most common way to test and showcase different technologies, so let's build one of those. I also thought it would be interesting to enable collaboration in our app. Collaboration is a feature offered by quite a lot of products these days, and it will also give us the chance to test the real time capabilities of our tech stack. You'll be able to add new tasks by clicking anywhere on the canvas and tasks created by your teammates will show up on the screen without the need to refresh the page. Here are the libraries we'll use. Solid Start as a meta framework, which should take care of the UI for us and will also give us the option to use server-side rendering if we need to. I could have used an established library such as React or one of the more promising newer tools such as Velt. I am choosing to stick with Solid, however, because it is simpler and more lightweight than React and, compared to Svelte, follow some of the more established software practices such as functional components and the use of JSX. Please don't read too much into this decision, since front-end library debates end up giving me headaches. I am a long-time React developer, and I also express my excitement regarding Svelte multiple times on this channel. We are aiming for simple solutions, and, in my opinion, Solid has the leanest learning curve and resembles plain JavaScript the most. For the backend, let's use PocketBase. I am more and more in favor of using backend as a service solutions as opposed to in-house built backend systems. This is especially true for prototypes and smaller apps. There are a lot of options out there, such as Firebase or Supabase, but I'm choosing PocketBase for its simplicity and portability. On top of that, PocketBase exposes a REST API, so it will be easy to replace this with a more scalable solution if we need to in the future. Finally, let's completely remove the need to write CSS in our app and leverage Tailwind CSS utility classes to achieve this. As a quick FYI, if you are not familiar with some of these libraries and you want to learn more about their benefits, check out the video description for some content on these topics. Ok, let's jump to the fun part and build this thing together. First, let's set up our pocket-based backend. Go ahead and download the app from their website, unzip it and run the following command in the terminal. This will start a Golang server with an administration dashboard you can reach on this URL. In the dashboard, let's create two collections. These are SQLite tables under the hood and PocketBase will handle all the create, read, update and delete operations for us. The first collection is called project and has a single field called name. This entity will help us group tasks together. As an FYI, unique IDs and some other audit fields are defined and handled by default by PocketBase, so we don't have to worry about those. Next, we'll define a task collection with a name, a description, and a project column which will act as a relation field between tasks and projects. Then I'm declaring X and Y fields to store the task position in the canvas and the color field which will allow us to customize the task card. And that's pretty much it. In a couple of minutes we were able to define a table structure and in return we got all the necessary REST endpoints to perform operations on our data. Next, let's build our app. We'll start by installing Solid Start with the following command. In the wizard, you'll get the chance to select TypeScript as the preferred language and use the Vite Tailwind CSS template. On top of that, install the pocket-based client npm package and we are ready to go. Some would argue that we should have avoided using TypeScript to keep things as simple as possible. They might be right, but this is one of those small concessions I am willing to make to ensure better code maintainability and reliability in the long term. So, in a domain.ts file, I am adding two interfaces mirroring the collections we built a bit earlier. This will come in handy in the next few minutes when we'll start to work with this data. Then, in a service.ts file, I'll add the necessary functions needed to communicate with our backend. As I said, we could use plain fetch calls here and query PocketBase's REST API directly. This would be my approach if I know for certain I'll need to horizontally scale my backend in the future and I'll end up replacing my backend with a custom implementation. 
However, the quicker option is to use the Pocket Basis JavaScript client. This makes things such as working with the collections extremely convenient. We can easily fetch all the tasks associated with the project using the getListCollection method. As a quick side note, if your API is following the open API standards, a code generator tool such as Swagger could analyze your endpoints and generate a JavaScript client for you. This could be an alternative if you don't want to rely on a custom client implementation such as the one PocketBase is offering. Back to the code, we can send data to the server to be persisted in the SQLite tables. We'll get to writing some solid JS code in a second, but first I am adding one more service function called OnTaskEdit. As promised at the beginning of this video, we'll add real-time capabilities to our app. Whenever a new task is added in the collection, I want my UI to be notified and then updated accordingly. PocketBase makes this extremely easy with the use of the subscribe method or the real-time server sent event endpoint. Of course, in a real application, you'd have to write some validation and authorization code to work with this data, but this might get a bit more involved and time-consuming. If you're interested in more details regarding authentication and authorization, let me know in the comments and this could be the subject of one of my next videos. Next, let's work on the create task model TSX file. This is the UI component which will allow us to enter a name and some details for our task. I'll not spend too much time on the JSX template, since this is fairly straightforward. Note, however, that I'm using Tailwind CSS and utility classes for all my styling. I know that the utility classes approach tends to clutter the HTML, so I am using a nice little VS Code extension called Inline Fault to improve the dev experience. SolidJS is a reactive UI library built on top of signals. Whenever a single value changes, associated effects and JSX templates are updated accordingly. I define the title and the description at the top of my function component and then I am updating them accordingly whenever the change event is triggered on the name input field or on the description text area. As a quick validation step, we'll make sure that the save button will be disabled until both the name and the description are filled in. Finally, let's register some click events for the two buttons in the footer. When the user clicks on save, we'll call the onSave callback method passed as a property to our component and then we'll close the model. Then, let's link the model closing callback to the cancel button as well. Next, let's jump into the routes directory and edit the index.tsx file. We are using Solid Start, which is a meta framework built on top of SolidJS. One of the many benefits of such an approach is that we get a file system based router solution out of the box. The index.tsx file will serve its component every time a user reaches the base path. I'm defining a handful of signals here, which will act as the component internal state and will store information such as the list of to-dos, the coordinates we clicked on on the canvas, the active project, and the create model visibility state. Next, the onMount lifecycle hook is the place where we'll fetch all the necessary information to render our page. I don't want to get into any details about rendering strategies and optimizations. Just know that all this information is fetched and rendered directly on the client. For other strategies and options, you can check out the video linked into the top right corner. Okay. So once the user opens the page, we'll fetch the active project from the database and store it in the component state. Then, we are getting the list of tasks associated with the active project ID. Remember that all these functions were defined in the service.ts file. The last thing we need to do when the component is mounted is to subscribe to the collection feed and get updates in real time about new entries in the collection. Remember that anytime you are subscribing to a resource, it's important to unsubscribe before the component is unmounted. This will help you avoid possible memory leaks down the road. By the way, if you are enjoying this type of content and you want to stay up to date with the dev world, please consider subscribing to the channel. Back to the code, let's spend a little bit more time on the JSX template. First, whenever the user clicks somewhere in the page, we'll call the showModel function. We'll get back to this in a second. Next, if the to-do list is empty, I am conditionally rendering a label explaining to users how to create new tasks. If to-do entries are already saved, we are going to iterate over them using a special JS control flow element, the for component. Even though Solid relies on JSX, it doesn't use a virtual DOM like React does, so it is important to use their predefined control flows to achieve the best performance possible in the rendering process. For each task, we'll render a card component with a pretty straightforward implementation. I'm not getting into all these details in this video to avoid covering information already discussed, but I'm linking the GitHub project in the description if you want to check any of the details not mentioned here. Finally, if the create model flag is enabled, we'll display the create task model component we worked on a bit earlier. You should recall that this accepts two properties, a non-close callback which will simply hide the model and an unsafe callback. 
The last two bits we have to work on are the two click event handlers. Show model is called whenever the user clicks on the canvas. Here we'll store the X and Y mouse positions since these will be saved in the database and used later to render the task card in the correct position. Then, naturally, we'll assign the true value to the create model signal. The save to do handler is pretty straightforward as well. We'll pass all the necessary information to the save task service method, which in turn will send a post request to the server. Then we'll update our to do's list signal, which in turn will trigger a UI update. This might not look like much, but in my opinion, we achieved a lot of things in a very short period of time. If you are lucky enough to work with React a few years back, you probably remember that all the time spent building this app would not have been enough to correctly set up your React project. So, as devs, we have it really easy these days, and it is up to us to leverage the power of all these new tools to our advantage. If you've made it this far, congrats. You now have the chance to help me fight the YouTube algorithm by liking this video. Until next time, thank you for watching.